we finally have reached the end of Horror Month. Too bad we're ending on a pretty blah note. The Black Critic Guy here to give you the final anime review for Horror Month, and that's on the anime Boogie Pop Phantom. Now, explaining the plot of Boogie Pop Phantom will prove quite challenging as the story itself is overly complex with so many different variables and elements in it. But to put it simply, it's one whole story told through many different smaller stories that all revolve around this entity known as the Boogie Pop Phantom. Now there is more to the story, like this high schooler named Karima Nagi who is bent on hunting down Boogie Pop Phantom and protecting the city from all these weird beings, and these other entities that also exist that are kind of associated with Boogie Pop Phantom or were born from a certain event that happened within the city, and all these other smaller stories with all these other characters that all do tie in to the main story, but to explain them all would just take way too much time and it would just hurt my brain thinking about them. Now much like what goes on in this anime, I had no real idea why I chose to watch this over all the other animes on my list. Yeah sure, it was the fifth most voted upon anime for me to review this month, but I could have chosen a different one instead of this, but what the hell, I went down chronologically because I didn't see Hell Girl. I chose this one, found out it was 12 episodes long, it was a horror anime so it fit perfectly with the theme of this month, so I gave it a watch and as I was watching this anime, I couldn't escape this sinking feeling I had that I watched this anime before. It just felt very reminiscent to an anime I reviewed a year ago. And which anime is that? Serial Experiments Lane. From the overly complex story to the dark and bleak atmosphere, the bizarre characters, the toned down color palette, and the connection to the digital world, it just felt like a spiritual successor to Serial Experiments Lane. And it makes a whole lot of sense since this anime came out in 2000, whereas Serial Experiments Lane came out in 1998. And just like Serial Experiments Lane, I just found this anime to be quite confusing and really difficult to follow, and I just personally was not really invested or interested in the story or the anime as a whole. But that does not make this a bad anime. It's still a pretty decent anime, it's just it's really hard to follow and get attached to. Unlike Serial Experiments Lane, this anime actually has a coherent story to it. It's just it's really hard to pinpoint because the story is told in a broken, non-linear fashion. You have to pay really, really close attention to all the minute details in each episode to see how each of the different stories are all interconnected to form one whole story. And honestly, I really respected and admired the writers for their unique and ballsy approach to their storytelling. I mean, they could have easily, easily have hand fed you the story and you would have took it at face value. With their approach, they make you work for the story. They challenge your intellect, not in a belittling fashion, but in an intellectual way to make you focus on every detail that the story has to offer and make you piece together what is going on. So basically, if you're into mindless shit like explosions or guys punching each other in the face, you might want to skip this anime, it's not for you. The themes that are used in the anime like regret, memories, change, and escapism are prevalent in each story and are well executed. As well as the overall tone and atmosphere, very dark and eerie. Like my soul. <laughs> but on a serious note, some of these stories got really, 
really dark. Like, holy shit, I felt uneasy after watching some of the scenes in this anime. And there were two stories that I personally really enjoyed and felt like were the strongest of the bunch. The first one being this one called Mother's Day about a mother who recently lost her daughter because she was killed and she's reading her notebook and getting some insight on what her daughter was feeling and what she was going through after the loss of her father. And this episode just resonated with me emotionally and had a really satisfying conclusion. The other good one is about a reporter who is following and seemingly writing about Karima Nagi, the girl that's trying to hunt down Boogie Paw Phantom and protect the city from all these weird beings. And in this episode, it's basically just following him as he's following her. We get to learn a lot about Nagi as a character, why she's doing this, what is her past like, and they go into more information on who Boogie Pop Phantom is, how they came to being, and what is going on in this city. It's one of the only episodes that gives us much needed information about this world, and I really, really appreciated that. But even though I can acknowledge all the good qualities of this anime, and I can understand why people praise it, it doesn't change the fact that I still found the anime to be blah and I was never fully invested into what was going on. Mainly due to its subpar low quality animation. Now when discussing the animation used in this anime, this is all personal preference mind you. I understand this anime came out 15 years ago and the quality of animation in anime back then is nothing compared to the quality of animation in anime today. So I will not hold it to today's standards because if I did, it would fail that test immediately. But if you want your anime to be timeless or at least to suck your audience in, you gotta do a better job with this animation. I mean, hell, I was still sucked into Serial Experiments Lane, old Dragon Ball Z episodes, hell, Yu Yu Hakusho still looks really fantastic, even nowadays, and all of these predate the 2000s. So why couldn't they put at least a little more money or effort into the animation used in this anime. Not to mention, I'm not a huge fan of toned down color palettes to begin with. I'm fine if they're used sparingly or used to create atmosphere, which I understand that was its purpose in this anime, but for every single episode, it just got so jarring and exhausting to see all the time. And if toned down colors weren't enough, they also added a lot of filters in each episode to make it look even dimmer. And now the anime story and characters. Again, I was able to follow the story for the most part. I got lost now and again, but I was able to find my way back to the main overarching story. I was able to piece together how each of the stories were interconnected. I got all of that. But the only thing I couldn't get is invested. I just didn't care about any of these stories and I just didn't care about any of these characters, most of which are just outright despicable, which I know was the point, but still just couldn't get into it. And lastly, I wasn't a huge fan of the score of this anime either, from the ambient noise to the avant-garde music to the very jazzy opening and the poppy ending. I just never felt like the music meshed well with the opening and ending themes, and I just didn't like the overall soundtrack. The voice acting is good, in fact that's probably the strongest element in this anime that still holds up to date. The voice acting by all the voice actors was solid, though there is no English dub, just Japanese sub, so you're gonna have to live with that if you want to watch this anime, if you're a fan of experimental animes like this. Overall, while I do acknowledge, respect, and appreciate Boogie Pop Phantom on an artistic level, this is just not an anime that I enjoyed watching. I couldn't get invested in the story or the characters, and it's not an anime that I could find myself watching again or even recommending to other people who aren't fans of the experimental genre of anime. And that's why I'm gonna give this anime a three out of five stars. Eh, it's okay, you know, if, if you're a fan of experimental animes, you might get a kick out of watching Boogie Paw Phantom, but if you're not, I recommend just passing it over. You, just, you don't need to watch it. It's not necessary. But anyway, what did you guys think of this anime? 
Did you really enjoy it? Did you get a kick out of it? Or were you like me and just found it really confusing and you just really couldn't get into the anime as a whole? And let me know what is an anime that you appreciate on an artistic level but just really couldn't get into. Comment below and let me know. And stay tuned, got a bunch of videos coming your way as well as a live chat on younow.com this Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully, if all goes well, I have two special videos coming out on Halloween Day. So until then, guys, if you'd like to see more videos on this channel and be a part of the Black Critic Crew, please hit that subscribe button below, like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm Tony Wallet II, the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube.